Marshall Tensley Hill, guard. Daniel McLaurin, forward. Alfonso C. Regal, center. Gregory Monroe, forward. William June Harris, guard. Hollis Vines, forward. Class of 1966, Hillside High School. Why was it an appropriate nickname? Why did it fit? The Pony Express. Back in the old days, when uh, you had to get the mail somewhere real fast and stuff like that, you used the Pony Express. We were the modern day Pony Express, getting that basketball up and down the floor as fast as you can. Carl Malone was not nah, the first so mailman. About to say. <laughs> <laughs> we were the first mailman. <laughs> we were very fast. There was no team able to keep up with us. They may do it the first half, but the second half, no way they could do it. From 1964 to 1966, no team in North Carolina delivered more Showtime basketball than the Durham Hillside Hornets. Our slogan at that time was, if you can't run, you can't ride. Grease lightning. <laughs> it was amazing. I mean, it was just running. Once the ball came off the backboard and you feel the outside lanes and stuff like that, it was just fast break. It was just moving. During the 65-66 season, Hillside High scored at least 100 points in 14 of its 23 games. Once, they scored 147 points in a regulation 32-minute game, demolishing their opponent by 90 points. That 147 points is the most points that have been scored in this state uh, since 1966. That's one of our records that we still have. They were hitting 100 when 50 and 60 was maybe the norm that other high school teams, it was a style that a lot of people hadn't seen before. Generally in high school, it was often the responsibility of the statistician to call back to the local paper. I'm calling back, yes, we beat so-and-so, uh, 98 to 65, and their silence on the other end of the <laughs> telephone. Uh, you sure about this score? Yes, I'm sure about this score. Despite the numbers they were putting up night after night, the Pony Express received little recognition outside of their own black community. On the court, they may have been extraordinary athletes, but in the eyes of the segregated South, they were still just colored boys. And we wanted to play against anybody, black or white. But because of the era, we were limited to who we could play. We never got that kind of attention that maybe a white school would have gotten if they had set all the records that we set. We got ink, yes, but we didn't get the national coverage that we should have gotten. Unlike their white counterparts at other high schools, the players at Hillside High were not recruited by major colleges or universities. How many players on your team went on to get recruited by big colleges? Uh, when you said big colleges. Dukes, so. UNC, Nine. Wake Forest. Not. Once again, that was the times. In fact, no Hillside player was recruited by a Division I school until 1972, when John Lucas received a scholarship to play at the University of Maryland. Lucas went on to play 14 seasons in the NBA and was the head coach of three NBA teams. But during those record-setting years of the Pony Express, Lucas had a much lesser role. He was the team's ball boy. Sometimes after we have practices over, he shoot around. You know, we taught him how to play ball. And what made John so good, I think, is John became a student of the game. Those were my role models. I know when I played on the varsity at Hillside, my goal was to see if we could average 100 points a game like the Pony Express did. We, we, we weren't that good. <laughs> For the players on the Pony Express, making it to the NBA was a dream that society didn't even allow them to consider. That wasn't something in our mind because of the fact that we thought that racism and segregation was going to be on forever. That's the way we grew up. And the inequities on the hardwood were nothing compared to the indignities they faced every day, reminding them that they were separate and not equal. It was like all the black people had one thing and all the white people had another. We stayed basically in the black community because it was unsafe to be out by yourself. So segregation to a point, I guess, made us stronger. And that's what it's about, being able to survive. As time passed, the records and statistics of the Pony Express were lost as the black and white leagues merged. When the merger took place, as often occurred, the black contribution tended to be ignored. 
the records were very available you know, for the Caucasian schools. And then we started trying to find the black records. And all the records from the North Carolina Athletic Conference, which is what the black schools played in, were gone. It wasn't until the early 1980s when the North Carolina High School Athletic Association began compiling an official state record book that the legend of the Pony Express began to ride again. Gradually, the folks at the North Carolina High School Athletic Association realized that this whole subset of pre-integrated black schools out there that needed to be brought into the whole story of North Carolina high school sports. And then the more you talked about people that had followed high school sports, be they black or white, in the 50s and 60s, they said, well, you need to check out this Pony Express team. And the good thing about it was we were able to find documentation of these numbers that were astronomical. And people said, what, a school really scored 147 points in a 32-minute game before the three-point goal? But the answer was yes. And that's when we knew that we had some records. And we were aware that no one has ever broken them. Man. And to be honest, I don't think anybody's going to break them now. <laughs> what was the score there? 110 to 60? Ligon High with uh, Spence and, uh, and Robinson. Yeah, yeah. And whacked that butt. Yeah. <laughs> Today, the members of the Hillside Hornets still reminisce about the good old days and about their place in North Carolina sports history. But I sure would have loved to get the opportunity to go up against some other powerhouse. But they can't help but wonder, what if? What if they had played during a different time? What if the doors that were once slammed shut had been open? What if the Pony Express had the chance to show the world how good they really were? There's no telling what could have happened if we had the opportunities that the people have now. LeBron James is not a wonder. <laughs> Most of the guys from Hillside could have went straight to the pros from high school, but it wasn't the right time.